It's Josh, FJ55 Iron Pig. Thanks for clicking on the video. Look at this outstanding, amazing, thrilling background we have here. One of those really cool manila envelopes. Not going to show you what's inside it because there's really nothing in there. This video is about this. Leatherman Mutt. Got myself a new multi-tool. I needed one because mine are broken and or lost. I have one that I use around the house, but I use it for around the house. I did a lot of research for a long time. I've had Leathermans in the past, not the Leatherman Mutt, and I settled on this, and I'll get into that. Uh, Leatherman Mutt, if you are not familiar with it, that is actually an acronym. It doesn't mean it's like a dog that gave birth to whatever jumped over the fence. Mutt stands for Military Utility Tool, if I remember correctly, and there's two versions of this. This one is just the standard mutt, and then the other one is a Leatherman Mutt EOD, or Explosive Ordnance Disposal. Someone who deals with explosives, and it has a couple different things on it. I like it. This is specifically made for military, AR-15s and M4s, but it can work for just about any firearm, and we'll get into that as well. But it's overbuilt. It's a little heavy, but it's well thought out. And uh, the edges, when you grab it, are rounded. Better than, say, if you've ever held a Leatherman Wingman, they're newer ones. The edges do cut into you, but this one does not. It feels really good. There's only one little hot spot. Where is it? Oh, yeah, right here. And let's get into it. This right here, this funny-looking gold piece, if you're not familiar, that is hardened bronze. And that's for cleaning fouling off your firearm. I have not used it for that. I actually use this for cable work. For cleaning the center wire off of cables that are too short to cut back and put a new one on there, I do this to clean off the copper center wire, and that helps buy them time so that the customer doesn't have to spend money on something else. It's just a time-saving device there. Um, right here is a punch. This actually comes off, by the way. And the nice thing about this, this accepts gun cleaning stuff as well, so you can put on there... Oh man, what can't even think of the name. The rod you can push through through your barrel to clean. Can't think of the word. And right here, this is the uh, the male adapter. Whoops, sorry. The male adapter right there. Right here is the female one, and you can screw one in there as well. It just goes right here. And you use that to pull through your barrel or whatever you want. Um, you can put other things on here. There's a C4 punch, which is on the EOD model. It's a bigger punch. It actually punches the hole for the blasting cap. And you can also get one that's made specifically for Glock models. This is for getting the takedown pins out of your AR-15 and M4. But the Glock is just a little bit bigger, and you can get that as well. If I remember correctly, it's about 10 or $15 for that. Not too shabby. All the pieces go in quite nice. Over here on the hinges, everything you can take everything off and replace everything on here. Uh, this is a part that is made to wear out eventually and replace. So is the hardened bronze scraper. Uh, over here on this side, we've got the combo blade. Most Leathermans come with a combination blade here. This one is no exception. It's very nice. It's got the Leatherman scalloping right there. It comes out of box, and I watched a lot of reviews on YouTube and read a lot of blogs where they said it comes out wicked sharp. It comes from the factory very freaking sharp, shaving sharp. Mine did as well. Here's a locking mechanism for you right there. See the little lock? Little liner. Look at, look at that lock up there. It's quite nice. To release it, you just simply press in and fold the blade. On the opposite side, you have your saw. This is a very aggressive saw here. The white you see in there is drywall, because I haven't used this for cutting into PVC conduit outside, but I've used it for cutting out the boxes on drywall, and it worked excellent because the contractors didn't cut it all out, so I used this to cut it out, and it didn't fracture the drywall at all. I was very impressed, and it ripped right through it, like butter, literally like butter. It was excellent. Going over to here, we got a little bit here in the way, and that is purposely designed to be in the way right there. This is the normal storage for the shortened bit, um, the way you access your bits, and if you're not familiar with bits, a bit, or a tool bit, <laughs> it would help if I press on the right side. Right here, see this little tiny piece of metal? You just slightly depress it and it comes out. A bit is a part or a bit of a tool. Picture like a, a regular screwdriver. You got the handle, you have the shaft, and then you have the working end like this. That's an entire tool. The bit is the actual working end. 
and this is a bit driver. You got Phillips and flathead. I keep the Phillips out. When you close this up, it protects your hand and your clothes from getting in there. Yes, that is razor sharp. You don't have to worry about getting cut there. I worried about that at first, and it doesn't catch your clothes either. This is a seatbelt cutter. I use it for cutting zip ties, and it works very well for that. Um, you could take that out, and you can store it right here if you want. I don't. I leave it there because I use it, actually, for wall plates and other things that use a Phillips head. Ground blocks. This right here is a carabiner, and it's also a bottle opener. It was purposely made to be a bottle opener as well. haven't used this on a work site anywhere. I've used it at home. I don't want to leave it behind, so I don't use the carabiner that much. There, this funky looking, looking thing, it's called a bolt override tool is the main part, this part here. So like your AR-15 or M4 gets jammed up in a bolt override situation, you can look it up. There's Other people explain it very well. It's a horrible thing that happens every once in a blue moon. Put this into the bolt, and you rip it back to get the, the round ejected out, hopefully. It works great for that. I've seen lots of videos on it, and this is also replaceable, the cutting heads in there. But it's also a hammer, and is made to be a hammer, to hammer down pins back into your firearm. I've used it to hammer nails. I've used this to pry open a door. Um, it's very durable. Very nice, actually. I'm very impressed with it. I keep saying very a whole bunch. I apologize. This right here is a lock. If you carry it in your pocket like I do, and you're concerned about it opening up, you can set the lock, and it won't accidentally open it. Unlocks very easily with the thumb. And then it hides away just like so. I don't use it. I don't have to worry about it coming open. I haven't had that problem. Pocket clip. This is made out of one piece titanium. It's also replaceable or removable. Your choice. I like it. It is durable. It's strong. And it doesn't flex much at all, which is something I need. Um, that's it for the outside. So let's open her up. When I first got it, it was just a tiny bit stiff. Now it functions flawlessly. The uh, pliers or cutter head. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm just getting over cold there. <coughs> are not spring loaded. If that's a deal breaker for you, it wasn't for me, it works great. But here, let's show you the lockup, if you will, on this. People who are online, I'm squeezing the crap out of them right now. We're complaining because these do not line up perfectly right there. I like that they do not line up perfectly in mesh. Why, you might ask? And I found out the hard way by pulling slivers out with this plier when I was up on a roof doing a pre-wire I had a bunch of slivers in my hand that little tiny bit the grass grass super tight and it holds very well and it doesn't pinch a lot of skin if it was more flush across here you grab more of your skin it worked excellent for pulling slivers out it works great for just grabbing a little tiny piece of something and grabbing it I've used it several times for that on different reasons you have your normal uh, I guess you call it nut style like almond shape plier heads there they were great. I've used them several times. There's not a lot of wear. Oh, on the needle nose part right here, I'm trying to get it to show up. Well, it's serrated here. There, you can kind of see it. And you can hear it. They work great. The cutter heads, I, I believe they're carbide. You can replace those as you can see. So if you wear them out eventually, no big deal. Simply replace them. They work great. RG11, RG6 cable. RG6 cable is the cable going from the wall to your TV. For cable services, cuts right through it. RG11, you have to do a couple cuts because it doesn't fit all the way in there. That's the bigger line outside, cuts through there as well, including the center wire, which is a heavy gauge. Right there, got a little bit of a crimper. On the um, EOD model, instead of having clippers here, you have a blasting cap crimper right there instead. There's no clippers on it, but you can swap them out from what I've heard. And that is just about it. The other thing I want to show you on here see this it reminds me of a safety like a um, Mossberg I think it is that has this safety on there and it works very similar to it what it is is for the longer I guess they'd call them the full-size bits you can either push them out like that with your thumb we'll go ahead and take this one out or if it doesn't come out you just give it a smack on your hand and voila you get a longer bit this one's the Phillips flathead bit and it actually shows you right there Oops, number two and quarter inch. And uh, words to the wise, if you do get this, put it in Phillips head first, not flat head, because it'll jam up on this side a little bit. And it's a little bit of a pain the, the took us to get out. If you want to access the other one, you simply press here. That locks both of them in so they can't fall out. One more time. 
There we go. And we go to the other side. This side is specifically chosen here. Get the right side here. You have both a hex and a star bit. Focus. There we go. Come on. Horrible example here. Why isn't it focusing? There we go. We've got a T15 and then a 764s. 764s and a T15 are very common for when you're working on scopes. Whether it's a LaRue quick detach mount or an actual scope rings, this is very common sizes. That's why this is in here. This also works with a lot of cable stuff as well, which is why I use this. And I carry it with me while I'm at work. It works out wonderfully, especially when I forget to grab my tool bag or if I'm in a hurry. This has come in handy, whether I'm up on the pole or working under a house. It works out great. Folds up nicely. It comes with, uh, where's it at? There's my sheath. I don't wear the sheath, to be honest with you, just because I don't like a lot of stuff on my hip. I'm sure when I get older I will. But, you know, your typical Leatherman military style. Ah, uh, I can't talk today. So sorry. Velcro hook and loop. It also comes with, I have the older one that has this little punch on it. Come on. The newer ones have double sided. I think it's a three quarter and a quarter inch wrench. Mine's a th or a three eighths and a three quarter inch wrench. This is a three eighths and whatever that doohickey is. I haven't looked it up to find out what it is. But it's really nice tooling right here. It's solid. I mean you got a thick piece of bar metal. Very impressive. You could use that as a, a widgie bar I guess. But it has its own little pouch right back there. And if you get the bit kit, which has many other types of bits with it, like quarter inch nut drivers, you have two choices here. You can put it either in here, or you can put it in here, or you can split them between the two and put your Leatherman in there as well, but it's gonna be a very tight fit. Normal, typical Molly Leatherman stuff. Really good build quality. The case, if I remember correctly, is made in China, unfortunately. But hey, you get what you pay for in a sense. The tool itself is American made, baby. So that's my really long review on this. I've been beating the crap out of it and it's working great. I love it. Um, if you think you might be interested and you have some questions, shoot me a question. If I don't know, I'll tell you I don't know. If I do, I'll let you know. I recommend it though. It's well worth it. I got it off of eBay. It was the best price I found. Do your own research. Walmart had a good one on their website. Thank you for watching everybody. Get yourself a multi-tool. Find one that works for you. Take care.